So you ready for a road trip? I know I am. So uh, I drove into Bellingham from Nooksack. It's about 17 miles or so. And now I'm going to head out Chuckanut Drive. And don't worry, the camera's on a little tripod. I'm not touching it. My hands are free. Here we go. Things are rattling a little bit. I'm going to need to repack a couple spots in the car, I think. But that's that's kind of usual. So you can hear the sound. Maybe you can hear the rattling. You can hear the sound of the tires on the road. And you might hear a sound that some people call a deer whistle. Like a high-pitched whine sound. That whining sound, you know, was intentional because people complained that electric cars were too quiet, as if there is such a thing as a car that is too quiet. I mean, I get it. People want to stare at their phones while they're walking across the street instead of looking where they're going. Not that I have an attitude about that. But, you know, everybody knows you're supposed to look before you walk into the street. So, you know, noise pollution, of course, is a major issue with gas-powered cars. Uh-oh, I'm going to get on my soapbox here because i got lots of time here that I can talk. Okay, so maybe maybe you're already converted and I don't need to preach. So, oh, road work ahead. This should be interesting. I didn't know about this, but it's not that surprising because this is checking a drive. And there are constant uh, landslides. Well, not constant, but frequent. Frequent landslides this narrow little road that goes kind of along a cliff. So, that wasn't so bad. Got right through that. <clears throat> so, checking it drive, if you're not familiar with it, Highway 11 in Washington State, kind of famous for being windy and narrow. And some people don't like to drive on windy and narrow, but personally, I love it. I love driving on windy and narrow. I dream about Highway 1 and on the California coast and such. So when I get to Highway 1 on the California coast, it just makes me feel like I'm at home right here. I'm checking it drive, a road that I've been riding on all my life with other people driving or riding my bicycle. Yes, I used to ride my bike on this all the time. Lots of people do. It's just beautiful. It's worth it if you wear your fluorescent yellow jacket. Anyway, I don't want to talk your ear off. Let me think what else I can say that's important. Okay, so I did decide to bring the portable level 2 charger. So I am carrying two electric car chargers, which is what I usually do. I mean, it just makes sense. You don't ever want to run out of charge. Trust me on that. So I brought the level 1 charger, you know, the one that goes in the wall outlet, and the level 2 charger plugs into a special outlet, like a 50 amp plug, which I will show you a picture of, and, um, you know, like RVs use those plugs, and your dryer in your home, you probably have these in your house, just, they're not for, you know, everyday, well, everyday drying your clothes, yes, but most appliances don't require this big plug, but that's what the level 2 charger requires. So, chances are, if I use that at all on this trip, it'll be at an RV park or some odd spot. There are a couple of odd spots that don't have chargers, but do have this sort of, you know, big outlet that I can plug a level 2 charger into. So, places that welcome electric cars to come charge if you are carrying your own level two chargers. So I guess I'm going to be going to those places. So well, where are we going by the way? <laughs> We've left Nooksack which is uh, about 10 miles from the Canadian border and well I'm planning to go to Portland. How about you? So uh, Portland I'm going to visit my cousin. It'll be great and maybe then I'll go to San Francisco. Why not? Um, I'm not a big planner, but, you know, it helps to have a rough idea, right?
right? Rough idea. My rough idea is to go to the Bay Area, the San Francisco Bay Area, because that, I believe, is totally doable for normal people. I am not normal people, in case you haven't already gathered that. I do things that other people maybe don't do, which is fine, neither here nor there. But I want to help you to do something that, you know, is reasonable for you to do and, and comfortable enough that you might do it. And I think, you know, like Bellingham to San Francisco or Seattle to Oakland is totally doable for someone who does not have a lot of experience with electric cars, especially since I'm going to coach you, I'm going to show you, and um, you can learn from my experience and hopefully not repeat my mistakes. <laughs> so, checking that drive, beautiful day, it's supposed to rain tomorrow and the day after and after that, so who knows what kind of weather we're going to be getting on this trip, but I'm not expecting freezing temperatures, so that's kind of exciting. And today is beautiful, and I'm really enjoying this drive. I hope you're enjoying this drive, too. It's going to get more beautiful. So what else can I tell you? Oh, I do take requests. I am thinking, you know, here's some trips I'm planning, since I've got some time to chatter. I am planning to do the Cascade Loop. So that means taking one mountain pass from western Washington to eastern Washington and then driving either north or south and then taking a different pass back. So, loop. It's beautiful however you do it and I've done it before. I'll do it again, but it's too early in the year right now. It's still March and uh, Highway 20 is closed half the year because of snow and such. So we gotta wait until the highway's open and the weather is a little more warm and spring-like for a little longer and then I will take you on a road trip on the Cascade Loop. So that'll be fun, beautiful, not real long of a trip, maybe like two days or something. We'll see how that works out. And another possibility is I could go touch Canada because I live so very near Canada and then I could go touch Mexico. Wouldn't that be fun? Well, I've done this before, but it would be new to you, right? So, um, uh, it's a beautiful drive. It's one I enjoy. So that's something to consider. I will probably end up doing that, especially if there's interest in this video blog that I'm doing. So, the car's pretty quiet, which is why you hear, like, you know, things that I own and I've packed not very well kind of buzzing. Most of the things I packed pretty well, but not everything. So, I'm glad my car doesn't make that roaring sound. Maybe you'll miss it if you're used to a gas car. The noise that gas cars make. You get familiar with things and then you, you have to get used to new things, like the quietness of electric cars. I'm at this charger here at the Padilla Bay Reserve. I gotta tell you, this is one of my favorite chargers, and I've been to a lot of chargers because of its beautiful location. It's, uh, well, near Padilla Bay, a beautiful place. And you can take a walk. There's a path that goes up there by the woods while your car is charging. There's also restrooms. And uh, I didn't have to stop. I am about 42 miles away from where I started. But because it's such a beautiful spot, I like to charge here even if I don't need the charge that much. So this one's easy. You, you just plug in your car. You don't need a fob. It's free. Did I mention it's free? This is part of what makes this the Vega Bond uh, EV journey, the E Vega Bond, is that uh, I'm trying to do everything here on the cheap. And electric cars are good for that because they don't need to, um, you don't always have to pay for your charge. Unlike gas, nobody gives out gas for free. So I'm charging here for a bit, just as sort of a quality of life thing. Take a little walk, use the restroom, and then I'll be on the road again soon. So you can see I'm here at the Padilla Bay Reserve. J1772 means that's a level 2 charger, pretty standard. That's usually what I'm looking for. And the gray arrow shows that the charger is in use. It's in use by me. But that is helpful to know, and it's inconsistent, but it's nice to know with chargers in use. So now i got to figure out where am I going to charge next. Now, because I've done this trip, I know I can charge in 
Burlington or Marysville and that those chargers are at malls and I don't really feel like going to the mall it's a beautiful day I feel more like going to Bothell so I'm gonna try to figure out if I can make it that far on the charge I have my car just finished charging it just made a little kerchunk sound Bothell Bothell City Hall that's the one I want if it works okay calculating drive so according to the app it is 62 miles from here to Bothell City Hall and my current range is just about 100 miles maybe 99 so it seems like I could probably make that so we'll see we'll see if I make that or if I stop somewhere else so I made it to this uh, parking garage at Bothell City Hall I had a 17 percent charge when I arrived that didn't scare me too much but everybody's different what will bother them these chargers don't require a fob or a card or anything you just plug in and they're free drawback being that they are often occupied so I chose to charge in Bothell rather than Marysville or Burlington because uh, there were just more things here that I wanted to do I didn't really want to spend time in those places whereas I could spend time in this place however I'm kind of done spending time here and I still have two more hours for a full charge not that I have to get a full charge right now I have a 53 percent charge so I'm thinking maybe just roll out of here and on to my next stop and spend some quality time there uh, so I've gone over a hundred miles today and I charged before I had to I didn't wait till I had to charge I charged somewhere that I felt like charging some place I chose to be rather than wait until I'm desperate or really low on charge and then I have to spend a long time somewhere um, that said rolling in with a 17 percent charge meant spending some time here in Bothell um, but I'm ready to roll so now I'm charging at an East Gate office park in Bellevue Washington it's not really a very exciting place to hang out, but it has four charge point plugs. So I figured since it's off hours, I'd have a good chance of getting one. And uh, a couple things that happened. First, you know, I tried to find the chargers, and I couldn't find the chargers because it's just this sprawling office park with parking lot after parking lot. So I had to open the PlugShare app and use that to navigate you know keep turning and going closer until I finally spotted the chargers and then I plugged in I parked here next to this cute little Mitsubishi I think it is and uh, shared this double charge point and you know, this two plug charge point I shared it and I immediately noticed that the charge was pretty slow and some of these charge point chargers are like that you're basically getting half the charge you're, you're sharing it with someone else so I promptly moved over here to this other charger where fortunately there is no one using the other plug and so now I'm getting uh, well it did have it on the display now I don't see it anyway I was getting um, something like 5.85 kilowatts I don't know the technical stuff's not really that interesting to me so you have to ask somebody else about all that but anyway those are two interesting things that can happen you can't find the charger or uh, your charge is going slow and you need to you know move over to an to an unused uh, charger if there is one so now I'm gonna be hanging out in this uh, not very interesting place for a bit and plotting my next move Here's what the outlet looks like that I can plug my portable level 2 charger into. I don't know about other chargers, I've only used the juice box and I don't recommend it because it is poorly designed.